live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's the Q covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman here with my co-host, John Troyer. Happy to welcome to the program, Carlos Carrera, who's a Senior Principal Product Manager with Veritas. Uh, Carlos, great to see you. Yeah, thank you very much. All Happy right. to be here. So, so many of the things we talk to here in OpenStack and the cloud world, uh, you, you know, is relatively short-lived. You know, the average, uh, you know, lifetime uh, of, uh, you know, the average cloud deployment is like 1.7 years. Um, you've been for Verita at Veritas a little bit longer with that. Yeah. Ha ha had an opportunity to have a conversation with you about some of your history. So um, we're going to have to take the abbreviated format of that. Okay. But give us a little bit about you know your time at Veritas, some of the ebbs and flows of your career. Yeah, good. Well, again, thank you for having me here. It's great. Yeah, I've been 16 years with Veritas. Um, as I mentioned before to you, you know, back in 1994, 1995, we created the first file system on volume manager, right? Uh, a lot of things happened since then, right? At that point in time, the so defined storage store was not yet there. But many years ago, we got uh, some piece of software running on top of any kind of hardware, and we was able to help customers to move workloads from one place to another in a very agnostic point of view, right? And then we move into clouds, and now, uh, Three years ago, we started looking into what do we do with OpenStack clouds? Because this is going to define, uh, we're going to need something very new, something different. So today, this week, we're very happy because we finally announced Hyperscale for OpenStack, which is a software defined storage solution that has been built for OpenStack clouds. Yeah, I, I, when I look at the industry these days, uh, the, the the term lately is you know storage services. Uh, how we're doing things in, in software more. Uh, you know, OpenStack is the open source infrastructure piece. Uh, you guys are the hipster uh, player in this space. You you were doing software defined storage and software services not attached to everything else beforehand. So uh, so, sounds like OpenStack's a, a, a natural fit. Uh, you know. It, Tell us a little bit more about how, right. how Verifos tossed so fits into that. I think that, that, again, it was a perfect fit, but we had to review what we was doing, okay? Because, again, I've been many years, I was working with uh, traditional legacy architectures in the past. We had our cluster file system that today can work with 128 nodes. But we revisit, uh, is this what we really need to the new uh, OpenStack clouds that are going to scale? Uh, as you said, is that what I need is the storage services. So what do we have to rethink? What do we have to do to provide those storage services to that OpenStack cloud? So three years ago, we had this, we call Open Flame project that today is hyperscale, has been really building from scratch new products is what we call emerging products at Veritas. And finally, we uh, got separated from Symantec and we got all the visibility on the storage again. And is using all the know-how that we have in the history. As I say, we're a very big startup, right? But now, emerging with new products, with new, new solutions that has been designed for, for OpenStack from scratch. Could you drill down on the, the product itself? Is this yeah. is this file block object storage? Yeah. Is this sitting on top of servers, uh, laid off uh, in a, in a server-based way? Uh, how does it interact with OpenStack uh, drivers? That sort of thing. Yeah, it's a good question. So, it is Cinder storage. What we provide is block storage for OpenStack. Something key, it is based on commodity hardware of your choice. So, you decide what is the hardware that you want to use. Uh, really, uh, x86 servers that, that you can choose in the market, whatever you want. And one of the key differentiators is that we provide block storage, but we separate uh, the compute plane and the data plane. And this is an architectural decision we had to take three years ago. To say, we cannot scale, we cannot provide the storage services that you need in a single layer of storage. Because that is what most of the software defined storage solutions on the market are doing today. And then they're having problems with things like noisy neighbor, they are problems with things like scalability, like quality of service, and of course they're having problems with protection. How do I protect my cloud environments with OpenStack? And we as a net backup company, we have our leading net backup solution, we hear that from our customers. But it is not about bringing another solution that is going to bring another noisy neighborhood. So we really have to separate two layers, the compute plane, where you have your first copy, and the data plane, where you use cheaper and deeper storage 
to keep the second, third copy and do all the data management mm-hmm. operations. That's interesting what you just said there, two, like two copies. You have, so you do have a copy that's close to the compute, but then you have another Correct. from Correct, because the, again, if you take a look to what you have in the market, typically it's one size fits all. So do you need three copies for everything? And today you have emerging technologies. You, have, you can have things like MySQL, where you need high performance, or you can have things like Cassandra, where you don't need nine copies at the end because the application itself is giving you the resiliency. So if you use a standard solution that for each OpenStack instance you have three copies, that means you have three copies, three copies, three copies, and nine copies. And it's not only the number of copies, it's that when you make a write, you're writing nine times. And you're writing on the single layer. So we said, we have to separate that. The first thing is that, what is the workload? Stop thinking about the storage, stop thinking if this is a pool of SSDs or a pool of HCDs, and start thinking about the workload. And then we connected that very well with OpenStack, because OpenStack you have the definition of flavors, right? That is how many CPUs do you need, how much memory, but also we extend those flavors to say, what do you need in terms of a storage? What is the resiliency level that you need? What is the number of copies? What is the minimum performance that you need? What is the maximum performance? It's not only about solving the noisy neighbor with the maximum performance, about limiting, it's about guaranteeing that you are going to have a minimum number of iOS per second. At the end, what you can get, you can have a MySQL running with high performance needs with web servers on the same box without fighting each other. Carlos, can you speak a little bit about you know how customers consume this? You know how do they buy it? How's it priced? Yeah. How, how do you get it to market? Because you know we, we've talked before uh, you know with Veritas, you know storage used to always be either an appliance or an array or things like yeah. that, and the the software cloud world's a little bit yeah. differently. How does that fit? So today, it's software only. So you you make the decision about sure. what hardware to use. We try to simplify the go to market model. So it's based on subscription. Uh, you just pay for uh, the managed capacity that you have, and you only pay for what you have at the compute plane. So I think a simple model that we could find to go you know, into open source projects and being able to attach to, to that. Okay, C- can you speak to, when you talk about go to market from a partnership standpoint, you know, it, it's, a, it's a big market out there, Veritas, well-known name for, for many years, but you know, what, what partners uh, are involved in this, any certifications that are needed, yeah. you know? So we are, we're working with our you know, typical partners uh, that have some expertise with OpenStack and helping with them. We are now also working with, with hardware providers, we're working with Supermicro and creating reference architectures with them. Because at the end, we have to explain to the customers, you know, what they can get from different hardware. So we're working with them, and we're also working with new partners. For example, yesterday with uh, with us on the stage, we have Fairbanks. Fairbanks is an OpenStack ambassador in Netherlands. They have been working with us from the very beginning on this project, on the validation, and you know. Um, they understand OpenStack, they understand the issues, and they have been doing all the validation with us about, yes guys, this is the right thing you have to do from the very beginning. Is this product uh, tuned specifically for OpenStack, or uh, will it be available for other kind of private cloud so we, we have We have available for OpenStack, we're going to have it, we announced, I think we watched with you also guys, we announced the beta version for containers. At the end, is the same thing is how do you provide persistent storage for containers. 90% of the product is all the same, is that compute playing, is the data playing, how can I protect my workload from the data playing? Because again, is that it doesn't matter if it's container, if it's open a stack, when I have to protect it, how do I do it? How can I read my data without affecting the performance? And that's where we have the value with the data playing. And of course, our integration with Net Backup, you know, our leader backup solution in the market, where yes, with a single click, I'm going to connect OpenStack with Net Backup and define how my workloads are going to be protected, when and how. Um, here at the show, OpenStack Summit, how has it been working with the community? Uh, you know, sometimes in the open source world, uh, uh, vendors have to have a certain kind of conversation with that open source community to show that they understand their needs and their and w- what they need out of uh, the relationship. Uh, how has the week been then? So yeah, that's a, that's a very good question, and that's go to something that we want to to announce uh, hopefully at the end of the year. Um, the first the first version that we announced this week is based on canonical uh, Ubuntu OpenStack. Uh, at the end of the year, we are going to have uh, Red Hat and 
in our in, uh, DNA is to be agnostic to in the past any hardware, and of course now is any any kind of open stack distribution. So we will work with any of them. And something that we want to announce uh, uh, at the end of the year is to have a community edition for Hyperscale. So again, that is our you know offering to the community to they can go use and um, you know provide would, feedback for us. And would the that community edition itself be open source or, or just available uh, for it the community? It would be available for for, for that. the community. I mean, okay. We we keep our IP. Great. Uh, as we get towards the end of the event, I'm sure you've had plenty of interesting customer conversations. Uh, anyone, I'm sure you can't mention names, but any interesting anecdotes or just well, a general feel my, of the community? My anecdote for yesterday when I had a work presentation, we had a customer on, um, on the room. Uh, we have been working on a POC with them. We have been very, very helpful customer. We finished with, uh, do you have any questions? Um, this guy stand up and went to the microphone, and I was thinking, what is he going to ask? He know everything about the product. And he just said, hey guys, we are doing the right thing. Uh, this is great. Uh, I'm fantastic. You are bringing a lot of value here. So I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah, in, in my understanding, it was a big brand name customer who actually said where he was from, yeah. uh, which is great validation. Uh, something you know we've heard all week is that there, there's that sharing here with the community. So you know, financial companies who yeah, in the past wouldn't have done that, telcos, telcos who, who do that in the past, uh, great to see. Uh, give you the final word, Carlos. Yeah, I uh, think uh, again is uh, as you said, validation is a key thing. Um, I've been a lot of years in the company. I got this project eight months ago, and all the things I've been doing is just validation, talking to customers. To, I don't know how many analysts I've been talking during this week, and all of them said, "Yeah, guys, you are doing the right thing. This is the direction that that we have to move." So happy that you know finally. Uh, emerging again from where it has been back uh, here in the, with the community on OpenStack. Well, the, the speed of change, constant learning uh, on new things and, and helping customers move forward. Big theme we, we've seen in the show. Carlos Carrera, appreciate you joining us here. For John and Stu, thanks for watching theCUBE here at OpenStack Summit.